Greetings. Today we're going to talk about the joy of transcribing another one of my favorite fellas, John Coltrane. On Coltrane's album Crescent, there's a track, I think it's probably my favorite track on the album, but that's a hard call. I love every tune on that album. Uh, and it's called Crescent, or I'm sorry, yeah, Crescent's the album, and it's called Bessie's Blues. Um, there is a point at, oh wait, here's the, the track. This is the one that I'd like you to watch. Why? Because this guy did such a great job on the video. He plays it right off of vinyl. You can see the old uh, album cover and everything. It's really cool. Nice job. Um, and the time is to... Wait, let me get this straight. Oh, Navbar. Bane of my existence, Navbar. Wait, okay. <laughs> Two fourteen, exactly at two fourteen. Now, let's listen. It's sort of in the middle of the phrase. Remember, I like to cherry pick licks. Oh, I am so ahead of myself. Okay, so check it out. Here's what you do: you listen to that forever and ever, and listen to it for two and a half weeks. Uh, everything on the track is awesome. McCoy Tyner sounds great. Coltrane is a, a legend, of course. And get back to me in two and a half weeks after you have it memorized. I'll wait right here. Okay. Hi, welcome back. Glad you memorized that. Now, uh, it's just an E-flat blues, which means the train's in F. So I'm transcribing it in F, because he plays tenor. Okay? Okay. Um, and, of course, uh, you need that to inform the chord changes. Now, I've sort of selected out a lick. It's right at the top of his chorus. Now, let's take a listen to it. I'll show you right where it starts. <laughs> Oh my god, isn't that clever? Isn't that cool? What a clever line. Now, I took the mechanics of it and I did that before we even started. Because by now, you've got the mechanics of it. And as far as the articulations goes, Coltrane was referred to as the angry young tenor because he pretty much yells the entire time. It's awesome. It's a very angst-ridden type of tenor, and it's very cathartic. Oh, if you've had a bad day at work, come home and play some Coltrane, and you'll feel better in no time. Okay, I have to explain. This little creature is a false fingering. It's an E-flat on an overtone. Please refer to our saxophone boot camp series to see overtones. So here's your E-flat. And then if you overtone it on this E-flat. So you got... Okay, so that's what that is. Now, let me play nice and slow. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Now, get your horn. Tenor, please. Otherwise, we're playing in fourths and fifths. And here we go. Let's do it slow together. Oh, by the way, you have listened to that track a hundred million times, so your brain is speaking it to you already. Okay, good. So here we go. One. Two, and one, two, three. Now you can hear the blues go by. There's your one chord. There's your four chord and a one and it alters up there. Uh, this is just the first line of the blues. Let's do it again together slow. One, two, three. Faster, one, two, three. Up to speed, one, a two. Uh, uh, uh. Now let's play it with train. It's hard to play this uh, lick is right in the middle of a phrase. Okay. But I wanted to separate it out because, gosh, this lick is just infinitely clever. I just love the sound of this lick. Okay. Whew. I'm going to give us some more play. Stop. Nav bar. I'm going to give us some more play right here. Why is it so tiny? Okay. I'll give you some more pre-roll. I'll give you the end of the course. By the way, in the future, we're going to transcribe this lick, too. This. I love that one too. 
Oh, wait, here comes. Remember, you can be a jazz purist and a jazz Nazi and transcribe the whole thing. And yeah, I've done that for a couple of solos. But honestly, I think it's more fun to cherry pick because you know what? You're not trying to become Coltrane. But if you dig Coltrane, you can have that as an influence. You're not going to try and become Bird because there's already been a Coltrane and there's already been a Bird and there's already been a Brecker and a Chris Potter and an Eric Alexander and a Jerry Bergonzi. There's already, already been these guys. And Eddie Daniels and all those players that we talked about in our Who Should I Listen To in Jazz series, you're looking to become you. And so, this is part of my playing. I love this lick. And that's part of the fun of transcribing, is hearing those licks that make you go, All right, I love that! And then being able to actually play it. Now, of course, this was the very condensed version. I skipped the mechanics. Remember, you're supposed to transcribe using the downbeat as an anchor point, using the chord symbols, because you have your chord sheet, to inform your decisions as to what the notes are probably going to hang around, and lock it into the rhythmic grid underneath. You're supposed to do the subtleties of transcribing, which Coltrane is not subtle. It's beautiful. He's just angry the whole time. Uh, there's actually more subtleties in Bird when you transcribe. Remember that last um, transcription? And then you're supposed to play it on your own until you know it a million times, and then you play it with Coltrane a million times. So I gave you the really condensed version, and this is one of the licks that brought me a lot of joy, a lot of fun to transcribe. We'll do some more in the future, and now transcribe some more of your own. Ready? Good luck! <laughs>